Hello everyone, I'm Mark Zimmerman, and I'm excited to welcome you to the very first LCS Address. This will become an annual video series, maybe once a split as needed, reflecting on the previous year and a glimpse of what's to come in the new year. Since this is the first video in the series, and I'm just starting my role as the commissioner for the LCS, this will focus on more of what you can expect in 2024. Today, we'll be hitting on three core things. The first one being the hype, where I'll give you our big bets that we think will make you a fan of the LCS. The need to know info, so you'll be up to date on schedule, format, and ticketing. And then we'll wrap it up with just how we're gonna pull all of this off, as well as a quick check-in with the NACL and what they're planning. Before we dig in though, we have a quick message to fans who have been out here supporting the LCS. We know there have been challenges over the past years. We don't want to derail this video by going over the greatest hits, but we're going to keep working hard to rebuild your trust in us. We hope this video and these changes are steps forward in that direction. Now, onto the hype. We have some bold bets that we're making heading into spring 2024. First of which is that the LCS will now be played on the live patch every week. Whatever you see pros dishing out on the Rift in the LCS, you can instantly try out in your own games without wondering what's changed between the patches. Our pros have a platform now to show off their skills and strategies, and we will be the ones to steer the driver's seat of the meta. The LCS will also be bringing you matches faster than ever before. We're aiming to cut our transition times between games in half. The intended show flow will then go from game end to a piece of content to commercial break to champion select. I have worked the analyst desk for a long time, and we've heard you. Start the next game. Don't worry about your favorite analysts from the lounge though. They will still be here for pre and post show as well as recording content with our pros between the games. The LCS will also be exploring new ways for our fans to interact with the show. This could range from being able to vote at home on who gets interviewed after the game, which lane you want the camera to focus on in the early game, using your channel points to send messages to the casters, casters reading chats. These are just a few of the ideas that we're exploring right now, but we'll continue improving across the split. Fourth, the LCS will bring more communication content. Over the course of the year, we plan to continue doing regular updates, live streamed AMAs, media interviews, and more. This is a two-way street though, meaning that we will be monitoring what parts of the changes fans are liking and what they might want to see more of in the future. Finally, the LCS is the best Western region in the world. You heard me right. Energy destroyed G2, LEC's best team at Worlds in 2023, and was the only team from outside the LPL and the LCK to make top eight at Worlds last year. And you know, who knows, maybe the LEC will redeem themselves at MSI this year. But until then, the LCS reigns supreme. And we want the rest of the world to see more of the LCS. So we have details on co-streaming and partnerships with international partners that will be available soon. Okay, it's time to check in on that bet. We're excited, are you? If we haven't managed to excite you yet, then let us know why in the comments. What is the next area we can look to improve and innovate on? Before we move on, I quickly want to acknowledge the scope of these changes. We are excited to pilot these changes and there are very likely to be some hurdles and challenges as a result. In 2023, we made a lot of changes to deliver the best product for fans. And so we ask for a bit of patience and grace as we continue evolving the LCS. We are also excited to take these lessons from our changes and share them with other regions should they resonate with fans. Along this vein, I also want to acknowledge and thank all the hard work from the LCS teams to kick off this year. There are so many people within the LCS putting in the hours to get this ready for the upcoming season, and I cannot thank them enough. Let's now go over the all you need to know about the upcoming year. As you may have heard last year, the LCS is back on weekends starting at noon PST. Fans can expect four best of one matches a day, double round robin style, during the regular season beginning January 20th. You can go ahead and grab tickets for the games starting tomorrow at the link below. After considering multiple approaches, you'll notice that we decided to have a two week break after week four of the regular season. And there are a couple of reasons for this. First, this will keep the end of our season closer to MSI. The exit of two teams from our league and the season start date meant that we would finish our season very early without these breaks. Secondly, these breaks help avoid multiple weeks of overlap with the VCT, especially what would have been week six of playoff qualifications. We'll be sharing the Riot Games Arena space with VCT on week five only, and we will have an update on what that means at a later date. Finally, the two-week break gives us space in the middle of the season to evaluate all of these changes and look for tweaks and improvements in workflows. This means that the LCS Spring Split Finals would take place on March 31st. We are still finalizing the very last details of this and we'll share with you as soon as we can. You might be wondering, why best of ones? Well, we have a very strong understanding of what viewership starts, ebbs, and flows across the regular season format. This allows us to track the impact of the other changes that we are making and how they're being received by fans and will act as a control variable for us across spring split. Additionally, the contraction to eight teams creates more changes to the format already. We'll be evaluating this year and we'll be making changes if things are not quite feeling right. Still with me so far, 
Excellent. Let's get into the nitty gritty of just how we're going to accomplish all those big bets that we were talking about earlier. We're gonna go on a couple different ways that we're planning on improving the LCS. Let's start by playing on Live Patch, which will affect only regular season play. As I mentioned earlier, we want the LCS to become the place to watch when a new patch drops. And this of course means that fans can take anything they see straight into their own games to try and gain that sweet LP. Now, this also means that our pros will not have to practice on two different versions of the game during the regular season. And then they'll be able to shine on a global stage with whatever the latest big brain builds and strats are. To accommodate these changes, we'll be keeping one of the tournament realms updated to PBE. This will allow us to look ahead and see what's coming down the pipeline from League, as well as always have a practice environment even before the patch hits the live servers. As we implement this live patch play, we'll be closely monitoring the pro player experience and taking notes. Second, one of the most consistent pieces of feedback we've heard across all the years is that fans want the next game faster. Data shows that fans tend to tune out when the Nexus explodes, and they stay tuned out basically until the next game is on screen. Our goal is to update our current process by pre-recording the draft. Starting this season, we will look to have teams complete and record their draft in the practice rooms during the previous game. Afterwards, they will head backstage to wait until the stage match ends, and then they will perform their tech and ready checks. While those checks are going on, we will then air the previously recorded champ select for casters to react to for the first time, just like they currently do. Our hope is that this new process will allow for a smoother and faster flow from match to match. What does this mean about our analysts though? They will still be in the studio every day providing those pre and post show coverages, as well as some post game coverage where appropriate when there are hype moments from the games. More importantly though, this allows them to focus on creating content with our production teams now freed from a lot of the traditional constraints of an analyst desk, i.e. only five minutes long, only with winners, it has to be live and these sorts of things. We can use their talents in the studio space to create content that will resonate better with our fans to be aired on the most appropriate platforms. As an important reminder, this system and live patch play are only for the regular season. Postseason play will lock a patch as well as return to previous transition times to give teams the prep time between games. We will monitor both fan and pro player sentiment to these changes to improve and adjust as needed. The third thing we're looking at is increasing fan interactivity. We are looking to explore ways to deepen fandom and engagement with our sport by utilizing the tools on these platforms that allow fans to interact with our show. If you created a statistic that measured how much influence a viewer at home has over the channel they're watching and you ranked all channels, esports broadcast would probably be near the bottom. And we want to change that and use this powerful tool for deepening fan investment and engagement with the live broadcast. Imagine if you were able to vote on which champion, lane, or player you find most interesting for the camera to focus on a little bit more in the early game, or voting on who you think is most to say after a match. And then we also want to find ways to encourage a back and forth between the casters and the chatters. These are some of the ideas that we're looking to explore, but we do not intend to over-index on this. It's about finding the right opportunities to level up the viewing experience to keep fans engaged and interested throughout the broadcast. Finally, community-focused content. If you've made it this far in the video, you know how seriously we are taking communication and transparency in 2024. We want to respect everyone's dedication and knowledge of our sport and to communicate often so fans understand our decisions as we work to build more trust and connection. We plan to do this through a regular cadence of updates, including AMAs, blogs, and more. Even if we might not always agree, know that we are listening. We are ready to make changes to make the league better, and that starts with fan input. But wait, there's more. That's it for now from the LCS, so I'm gonna to toss it over to Zach to give you the latest for the NACL. Thanks, Kavish. Hey everyone, my name's Zach, aka Riot Whoopley, and I have the absolute pleasure of leading the NACL. So, let's talk about what exciting things we have coming in 2024. Our biggest change is also the worst kept secret of the off season, thanks to some talkative Pokemon. And that is that the NACL will be switching to Fearless Draft. Now, some of you may be familiar with it from the LDL introducing it in 2023. But for those unfamiliar, Fearless Draft essentially means that each team can only pick a champion once in a given series. Once the LDL introduced it, we spent a lot of time last year speaking with teams and exploring the format, and we're really excited about it for a couple of reasons. The first one is the developmental benefits associated with around requiring a larger champion pool for aspiring pros. We also think that Fearless will make matches in a series feel more dynamic for fans, as over time, more and more champions will be introduced into the series. In moving to Fearless, the NACL regular season will also be moving away from a double round robin best of two to a single round robin best of three. All of the NACL will also be going Fearless, including our regular season, playoffs, qualifiers, and the promotion tournament. Now, since we're the first Western League to try Fearless, we really wanna hear what you think. 
please let us know over the course of the split if it's something that we should invest in more as a format overall, or just make some small changes heading into summer. Our second big bet for 2024 is that we want to make it easier than ever for LCS fans to watch NACL. That's why we're excited to announce that NACL will be going live every single day after the LCS. We also want to create more of a cohesive experience across the two leagues, so you may occasionally see NACL content featured on the LCS broadcast. Similarly to the LCS, we're also going to be playing on live patches and minimizing times in between games. Thanks, Mark. The last big bet that we're making in 2024 is something that we teased back in 2023, the Tier 2 Americas Tournament. Now, we aren't ready to share too many details on this yet, but we're really excited about the new competitive opportunity that this will present for Tier 2 leagues across North America, Latin America, and Brazil. So that's what we have coming in 2024. For more information on our spring season, make sure to check out the accompanying article, which will include the full schedule, our qualifier applications for the NACL qualifiers, and our co-streaming policy. It's coming back in 2024. Now, before I toss it back to Mark, in the spirit of transparency, I wanted to take a moment to talk about our approach to the NACL, as it's no secret that 2023 saw a lot of changes. Taking it back to the beginning of franchising, we originally had the Academy League, where 10 LCS-affiliated teams would compete at the Tier 2 level. While that system definitely had its benefits, over time we started to hear more and more negative feedback, including that new organizations couldn't enter the ecosystem and invest in Tier 2, that players had no way to directly prove themselves and qualify into Tier 2, and they were completely dependent on scouts, and overall that there just wasn't a good enough amount of Tier 3 support in the North American competitive ecosystem. This is why over time we've been experimenting with new formats such as Proving Grounds that created opportunities for Tier 2 and Tier 3 play to cross over. This is also why in 2023, we officially have moved away from the Academy League to the NACL, creating an open ecosystem involving direct promotion and relegation, introducing the NACL qualifiers to build out a strong foundational Tier 3 ecosystem, and through these changes, we saw new organizations beginning to enter the scene, such as our recent NACL champions, Disguised. At the start of 2023, we also introduced revenue sharing for the first time with non-LCS organizations. We're able to do this thanks to our partnership with Rallycry, our NACL operating partner. And through them, we were able to secure amazing sponsors like Turo and Subway. And through our sponsors, community support through Twitch subs, and the 300K that we committed to Rallycry last year, not only was Rallycry able to cover all of their NACL operating costs for 2023, but close to 50% of NACL team's operational costs were also covered. We know this is just a start, we're hopeful that it'll be a good baseline to continue to build off of into 2024 and beyond. Going forward, we want to continue to cultivate a sustainable open ecosystem that feels both exciting through formats like Fearless Draft and aspirational through events like our Tier 2 America's Tournament. So that's it for me. Thank you so much for being a fan of the NACL and supporting our NA talent. Okay, Mark, back to you. Thanks, Whoopley. All right, everyone, I know that that was a lot to take in, but we hope you're feeling good about the direction of the NACL and the LCS this year. I wanna take a moment to thank our fans and teams. We've had some ups and downs, but we're committed to making the LCS exciting for our fans to watch, and we look forward to hearing your feedback. From everyone here at the LCS, thank you for your continued support.